Today we're doing math page 131, 132. Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. So number one is going to be a little review of things we were doing, and then number two will be taking that and putting it into addition problems. So we'll go ahead and get started with number one. One A is telling us to change these improper fractions. We have improper fractions. The larger number is on top. That makes them improper. We need to change them into proper fractions. Uh, into the forms of mixed numbers, whole number and a fraction together. So what we're doing here is we're saying how many times does 3 go into 8? 3 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6. We subtract and we get 2. And so we have 2 and 2 over 3. And remember, I've taken this 2, put it on top, this 3, put it on the bottom. And our answer is 2 and 2 thirds. B, we have 12 over 5. Same thing, 5 goes into 12, 2 times, 2 times 5 is 10. Again, we're going to get a remainder of 2, and we need to write that remainder in the form of a fraction. The 2 will go on top, and the 5 right here will get moved over. And we have 5 and 2 fifths. C. 2 goes into 6 three times, and we can be done real quickly here. That's it. Goes in evenly. What I've done in my head was just said how many times does 2 go into 6? Three times. 3 times 2 is 6. Subtract, and I got 0. D. 7 goes into 11. One time, when I subtract, I get 4. So the 4 goes on top and the 7 goes on the bottom. Our answer is 1 and 4 sevenths. Okay, now we're going to look at number 2. It tells us to add. It says to change the improper fractions and to reduce if necessary. So some of these will need to be reduced also. We'll look at the first one, A. Okay, we can add this easily. We know our 11 will be our denominator. And now we'll add 6 plus 5, that's 11, plus 3 more would be 14. And we get 14 over 11. Now the problem is that's an improper fraction, and so we got to make it proper, just like we did in number 1. So we say how many times does 11 go into 14? goes in one time, 1 times 11 is 11, we subtract and we get 3, and it's 1 and 3 elevenths. 1 and 3 elevenths, that can't be reduced, so that's the correct answer, 1 and 3 elevenths. B, our denominator is going to be 5, and we add up our 1 plus 4 would be 5, plus 4 more would be 9. Our answer is 9 fifths, which is an improper fraction, so we got to divide 9 by 5. 5 goes into 9 one time, 5 times 1 is 5. Subtract and we get 4. So our answer is 1 and 4 over 5. That can't be reduced any more than it already is. So we get 1 and 4 fifths. Okay, our denominator is 10. 3 plus 4 is 7. Plus 5 more would give us 12.
10 goes into 12. One time. 10 times 1 is 10. Subtract and we get 2. And so it's 1 and 2 tenths. Now this is the first one that we're able to reduce. I'm going to rewrite it over here because I ran out of room. You don't need to necessarily. 1 and 2 tenths is our answer that we got. That can be reduced to what goes into 2 and 10? 2 goes into both. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 10 five times. So our reduced answer is 1 and 1 fifth. D, 12 is our denominator. 5 plus 5 plus 5 would be 15. So now we got to divide 15 by 12. 12 goes into 15 one time. 1 times 12 would be 12. Subtracting, we get 3. So we have 1 and 3 twelfths. That can be reduced. What goes into 3 and 12? 3 does. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 12 four times. And so our reduced answer is 1 and 1 fourth. E, our denominators, we add those up, we get 8. And 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 3 more would be 11. Add up our whole numbers, we get 5. 5 and 11 over 8. This gets a little tricky, and I'm going to show you what we need to do. We need to first figure out how many times 8 goes into 11. Goes in one time. We get one and three eighths. We need to take this one and add it to the five. We need to take that one and add it to the five. I'm going to make a little room here. I'm going to get rid of the work that we did. I'm going to keep the 1 and 3 eighths right there. Here's what I want you to do. Take your 1 and add it to the 5. That would be 6. And then you keep your 3 eighths. And our answer is... 6 and 3 eighths. It's kind of harder. We'll try F now. Hopefully this will help. The more we practice it, the better we'll be at it. Okay, our denominator is 9. 2 plus 7 is 9. 7 plus 3 is 10. And so now we need to change this. That 9 goes into 9. That's an improper fraction. 9 goes into 9 one time. 9 times 1 is 9. We get 0. So we get 1 here. We need to take that 1 and add it to the 10. And we now have our answer is 11. Okay, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 1 more would be 5 over 4. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 8 more is 16. We have 16 and 5 fourths. I'm going to take this 5 fourths and do the work over there. How many times does 4 go into 5? Because in one time, and you get 1 and 1 fourth. So what we need to do is take our 1 and add it to the 16 and we keep the fraction of 1 fourth. 
So 1 plus 16 is 17, and now we have 1 fourth. Okay, our denominator is 10. 3 plus 7 is 10, plus one more is 11. 15 plus 7 is 22, plus 5 more would be 27. Okay, I'm now going to take that 11 over 10 and do the division. 10 goes in 11 one time. And we have 1 and 1 tenth. We need to add our 1 to 27. It becomes 28. So we just added this 1. And now we keep our fraction of 1 tenth. And our answer is 28 and 1 tenth. Okay, this tells us to find the quotient, so I'm going to have you do these on your own. And to help you to get started on that, I want to do a little practice with more about phobias. The other day we learned about phobias, and I want to see if you can guess what some of these phobias are again. So I'm going to give you a list of a few different phobias and you'll try to match them up with which ones you think they are. So here's a list of five phobias. I'm going to try to pronounce them. Uh, Bacalophobia, Ballistophobia, Balloonphobia, uh, Clinophobia, and Gyphrodophobia. <laughs> So now I'm going to put some definitions up here, and you will have to guess what these phobias are. Okay, I'll look at the top one, baculophobia. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of beds. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of microbes. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of bullets. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of needles. And raise your hand if you think it's the fear of crossing bridges. It is the fear of microbes. Okay, next one. Ballistophobia. Ballistophobia. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of beds. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of bullets. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of needles. And raise your hand if you think that is the fear of crossing bridges. Ballistophobia is the fear of bullets. Okay, next one, balloonphobia. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of beds. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of needles. And raise your hand if you think it is the fear of crossing bridges. It is the fear of needles. Okay, clinophobia. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of beds. Raise your hand if you think it's the fear of crossing bridges. It is the fear of beds. Okay, that should help you to get the rest done on your own. You guys can do it. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you.